okay uh, guys like um, this typescript class we are going to discuss on regarding the javascript and typescript because all of you know that before starting the typescript you have to know the basic concept of javascript okay before going in depth into all this typescript and javascript uh, like uh, the basic requirement for learn this typescript and javascript you have to know the html those people who do not know the html we are running a free classes for html css and bootstrap in the evening batch 6 30 to 7 30 if you want to join that class you can join that class uh, i'll share the link later okay okay before going into the javascript and typescript let me know why this javascript and typescript is required <clears throat> okay now in the modern application modern application means suppose nowadays you are running the application in mobile in web browser as well as in tv right in, in three different different places we are running the application and also nowadays you learn like you know that now javascript has got changed means the earlier javascript is now more robust as compared to old javascript nowadays using the javascript you can create both web application mobile application as well as you can develop the application that application can be run on the android tv means if you learn javascript then it will help you to if you want to learn the javascript or typescript it helps you to create the programming for different different platform including mobile web and tv but before going into in depth into typescript you have to know the concept of javascript let me show you why javascript required and without javascript what will going to happen let me paint something okay as all you know there is two type of programming nouns one is one is server side programming one is client side programming let me show you what is server side what is client side programming you have to know the basic of this concept then we'll go for a programming okay as you know you have a client client means you have to understand what is client the application which is run the application which is run on a machine of a client or the application which is interact by a user in their machine example you are opening facebook.com amazon or flipkart any of the site in your machine right you are not opening in the server means the application which is accessed by you in your machine we call as a client always remember you are a client to facebook you are a client to amazon you are a client to a, like different different site means all the logic of your data and whatever you are seeing just example i am opening this site okay now i have full control on this content i can do whatever changes i can to do i can do it here in my client okay the same way what I'm trying to say to here, the application which is run on your machine, that is called a client side application. Okay. The same way, if the application is run on top of a server, we call as a server side application. Let me just a second. This is your client side application and this is your server side application. Let me write it down. What client side? We have to, first, we have to know all these things. It's client side. It's client and it's a server <laughs> means the client is you means you have to give a request okay you have to give a request to server and server is going to process the request and return to you the combination of a client request and server processing the entire is world called a web application okay it, it, it so suppose you are a mobile client it's a mobile application the tv client a tv application if you are a web client it's a web application means client giving a request and server processing the request are returned back to you this entire thing were called as server client server architecture okay now to develop an application in server side most of you know that you, you may be used uh, like java sprint boot or you, you can be used like dotnet core php there are n number of language which is run top of a server okay this entire application is run inside the server but today's class we are going to discuss only on this client side okay server side i think you have to do like if you know the java all these things or know how it's running on the server side okay guys now let me today we are not going to discuss our server side we will only focus on client side as i told earlier 
client means your machine means any application is run a client side application like any code is run top of a client machine which called a client side programming same as as i told in server side we have a java we have a c like we have a dot net php etc the same way if you want to run the application client side in web i'm talk, talking specifically for web we need javascript means javascript is a client side programming which is used to run and execute on client machine and always remember javascript is always run in top of a client browser okay due to that first because you already know that all the requests will go from here only okay all the requests will go from browser only the processing part all the things you have to do in server side that's okay like authentication authorization data facing from database delete update all these things you are going to do in server but always remember the request who is sending the request always sending the request the client means client send okay create my account you have to process the uh, create account code in the like in your server client send request delete the account or um, update the account in the, that case what will do <coughs> you have to do all kind of operation in server but the client is the person who is sending the request and receiving the output from the server that's the reason client is the most important factor are now in the modern web technology it means you have to do a lot of thing in client now the question is i can simply send that request to the server but nowadays application is little bit more robust now whatever your application developing you are not developing for this only web you are developing for the web as well as the mobile right means the same application code can be run on a browser web browser as well as it can be run in a mobile browser to develop this kind of application we need the concept of a single page application means spa to do application let me give a small introduction to single page application single page application means once the page loaded that time you you no need to load the entire page again and again for this application okay that is called a single page application once you page loaded whatever the common module you have you have to once loaded just example in this site this menu is common for all the pages right if i go to new page or if i go to placement if i go to contact you can see this entire home page is common for all the pages just imagine why i need to call this header section from the server each time okay what i need, what i need to do i'll make this as a single page application once i load this header if i going to click any of the link what will happen only my this content area going to change okay not the entire application going to change that is the concept of single page application okay now develop this single page application you need certain programming languages that is called a javascript means you want to run you want to execute your client programming in your local machine for that we require the javascript okay now in summary i want to say javascript is the programming languages for a browser and javascript is a programming language which is run on a client machine or client web browser due to that we are saying javascript is a client side programming languages okay and this java dot net php all are the server side programming language because it's run top of a server okay <clears throat> now if you want to learn the javascript there is no requirement you have to just learn about how like html all this work like you have to know the html basic command all these things let me go and start with a basic javascript concept today and tomorrow we going to learn the basic javascript and our, today we going to learn the basic javascript tomorrow we are going to learn the advanced javascript day after tomorrow like in the continue class we are going to learn the typescript because the typescript is built top of a javascript means what i am trying to say it here like this is your javascript okay this is your java enter javascript is there the typescript is built in between the javascript this first you have to learn the javascript then you will going to learn the typescript without javascript you cannot learn the typescript okay this is the basic requirement for start the typescript let's go and start with javascript 
as you know if you want to create any of the programming that is the extension right like if you are uh, suppose you are listing some music that is mp3 dot mp3 in video suppose uh, mp4 like that right the same way to create a javascript you have to create a file first okay let me create one file just a second We are using the Visual Studio Code Editor to writing the all the JavaScript code. Okay, let me create one JavaScript file. Let me create suppose uh, index dot js. This dot js stand for JavaScript. Okay, JavaScript file index uh, js. Let it be. I will remove the. You just remember dot js stand for JavaScript. And uh, if you want to make a JavaScript file, you have to use your index dot js okay before going that i am to create another file called index.html we we'll start from html first then we will go for the javascript let me create one html file you know the html how to create suppose the old javascript let me write something code here let me save it and we will open this uh, index file let me open the browser side by side okay. i have it here to write a javascript now as you know first we have to learn about how javascript work in html okay initially you know this is your html file okay to write a javascript you have to use the script tag this is a script tag means you have to use the script tag to run your javascript okay let me show you something first we'll go for a variable declaration now the question why variable is required because now suppose you are designing an application just giving an example of why variable is required first you have to understand okay suppose you are developing one application okay in this application you want to store the employee information like name address gender and support date of birth just example i am creating what you need to store you have to store name or age date of birth in a suppose gender right suppose you are developing an application in that application you want to store this three information now to store this data you need some space right you need some space like how you are storing your image or how you are storing your file in your mobile you need some space right the same way in programming if you want to develop any kind of data which is going to store some value you have to need the concept of variable okay let me repeat it again as we are storing some images or videos in your mobile okay you need some space for that right the same way in programming suppose you want to store any information about something something means it may be user information it may be employee information it may be any information you want to store any information about anything in programming then you need the concept of variable then what is variable the simple uh, answer of variable means who is going to store a value means to store a value we need the concept of a variable always remember what is the store value means suppose you want to develop an application in that application you want to store different different information of a user different different information of a employee then you want to need a concept of variable okay example name date of birth gender etc you want to store in your application then you need the concept of variable okay always remember means when you declare a variable just imagine when you declare a variable what will happen to your application okay. so just imagine this is a variable we call the variable name as name okay sorry means what will happen you declare a variable that name is be name means you declare a variable which is going to store the name of a employee now what will happen you have to give identification it's a name and what will happen name contain a value right the value you have to mention suppose you want suppose john example 
So what happened? You declare a variable called name and assign the value called John. All right? Just imagine. Imagine the first of the concept. You declare a variable. The variable name is name and the variable value is John. Okay? That is the way if you want to declare any of the variable in Java, like JavaScript, you have to know the concept of variable name and equal to value. Example, this is the basic declaration of a variable in JavaScript. For that, the JavaScript given it predefined uh, keyword to define a variable like var. Var is used to declare a variable. Then your variable name equal to value. you have to understand uh, the basic concept of a javascript you have to know how to declare a variable first means what it what what is happening here let me draw it first happening here is bar this bar one is stands for declare a variable okay if anyone come from the java or any other background you have to know that like suppose in your programming you are defining int a age equal to 18 or a string name equal something you are defining right if anyone know all these things the same way if you want to declare a variable to store a value in javascript you have to use the keyword called var means any of the variable you want to declare a any variable you want to declare you have to use the keyword called var then var then what then you have to give the name of the variable okay then you have to give name of the variable var name then then you have to give the value of the variable. Now we have going to consider a value. What is value? Just imagine. You want to store your name. The name is always a string character, right? It may be, suppose it may be whatever name you want to going to define, it should always be character. Just imagine your age. Age is, is always be a number, right? The same way here, if you want to declare any kind of a string data, string means the character data, you have to give the double single quote here means what does it mean i have declared a variable called name which value is john and john is a string type or character type got it you understand first this question first all the statement where is used to declare a variable name is the name of the variable and whatever i assign here is the value of the variable but the value of the variable is depend different different uh, you have to define the different different type of variable okay let me draw like first i'll write var is used to create variable second one name is the name of the variable then john is the sorry John is the value of the variable. Why I am giving more time to this variable? Because this is the entry point of all the application. If you learn JavaScript, if you learn Java, if you learn C sharp, if you learn PHP, any any programming language you learn, you have to know first the concept of variable. Why variable required? Because you want to going to store a value, right? That's the reason. This is called. This is the more importance to know a variable here. You already know the var keyword, you don't know the name one, you are known to the john. John is a string because you are storing the name as a string. The same way, I want to declare another variable var age equal to 18. What you see it here, I have declared a variable called age and the value equal to 18. 18 is a number type, right? right? Number and john is a string or character. what you learn it here we can define a variable and we can define the type of a variable type means i'm talking about the type of the value it's maybe string it's maybe number it's maybe boolean i'm going to discuss all this in later but just now you have to learn there is a variable and there is a value and you can define the type of a value the type of the value we are calling as a data type the type means type of the value 
guys you have to understand all these things i know some of you know already know all these things but let me who don't know about the variable all these things let me discuss all these things because this is the basic point to know the all these things okay you clear how to define a variable and how to assign a value okay the same way in javascript you can declare anything a variable store a data you have to use the concept of a var then your variable name then your value okay. this is the basic declaration of doing the javascript clear then go and display this value when you declare some value right let me you want to declare this value let me go and show you something <clears throat> Before going that, you have to know this is your browser, right? In the browser, as you know, to, to learn all the JavaScript, all these things, we have a call inspect. Inspect means developer tools. Developer tools is a, uh, is a tools where you can run your client-side programming. Okay? It's a client-side programming. now whatever value you declare here i want to show that uh, whatever variable you declare here i want to show the value of this variable okay and what i'll do to log something to log means to display something in javascript you can use the concept of alert alert means it's going to display a alert box in javascript like alert alert is a function i'll go for function in depth alert is a function which is used to whatever value you are going to pass it here it is going to display like alert name will happen if i save it and refresh you can see it is displaying this page says john okay this is the basic of alert the same way suppose i want to display the name h then you have to save it and refresh you can see it is displaying 18 but suppose you want to print that value in console okay this is a console then you can use the browser's code like console dot log this is a uh, predefined function you have to remember all these things means so, some variable something you want to print in your console in browser console this is called browser this is inspect element i will open i click and inspect or short, short form is f12 okay you want to learn then name equal to john variable 18 suppose you want to print something console.log name if i save it and refresh you can see that i can able to see the john here okay the same way i want to print another one that console log then simple print edge you can see displaying john and 18 this is the concept of variable and printing okay this is you have to know suppose you are developing some application you want to print some value in your console you have to use the concept of console.log when you log something here whatever data you are passing here is going to display in the browser console tab okay this is the use of console let me go and go for next one okay. what we we'll learn here how to declare a variable okay let me go for the next one called conditional statement okay what is conditional statement let me do, no, no, there is just, uh, let me show you something conditional statement okay you want to show if my age is greater than equal to 18 then i will be eligible for vote else i will not eligible for vote this condition will make come your future suppose employee whose date of birth is more than that or suppose the employee salary is more than that you have to display this data if the employee uh, suppose um, salary is less than that or something like that you want to display some data means what i'm trying to say it here you want to do some logical work in your data to perform some logical data like what happen if the data will be going to that what happen if the data will go into that in that case how you can do in a javascript okay for that we know to do any kind of conditional statement conditional means you want to check some condition then you have to write a conditional code to conditional code in javascript you have to use if and else okay what is if and else like if you know like if something is going to happen 
you have to write something else you want to do something okay let me show that now our requirement is uh, if the age is uh, greater than 18 will show eligible or vote else not eligible okay, clear our statement will be if this age is greater than equal to 18 then we will show that the, you are eligible for vote if not then you are not eligible for vote right let's go and do how we can achieve this kind of logic in javascript okay for that you have to use the keyword how i develop this bar as a keyword keyword means is a predefined the uh, like keyword from the javascript you have to use that one i have to use if okay now if age age means age store 18 right i have declared variable age age greater than equal to 18 then i will start the curly bracket i'll explain all, all by all all these things then we'll write console dot log eligible for vote else console dot log sorry not eligible okay. let me save it and run it you can see here it is saying eligible for vote okay let me change this value to suppose 16 and refresh it is saying not eligible for vote now we will go and discuss this if and else block in depth okay <clears throat> What I told, I explained this if and else is a conditional statement. What is a conditional statement? You know, in the programming, if something, the logic will be, if something will happen, what you need to do? If something not happen, what you need to do? To like all these conditional statement, we require the concept of if and else. Just imagine, I have a program, okay? I have a program. The program will be first staying there is two part here one part is saying the true part another part is saying the false part example this part is true and this part is a false okay always remember the true part is always a if one the true part always if the else part will be false else else will be false if is it true you have to understand all these things what will happen if we discuss if my age is greater than equal to 18 then what i want to do okay in that case what will happen if it is greater than equal to 2 it will go to the if part means the condition is satisfied if not it should go to the else part okay this is the conditional statement you have one condition based on the condition you have to navigate from which block to another block like block i am talking about this is the scope means you are written here if round bracket age is greater than equal to 18 then what i need to do else what i need to do okay means this is the block will start this is the code i have started and the scope of the code is this round this curly bracket start and the curly bracket end this is called the concept of scope you have to understand the scope the whenever you see any programming there is a curly bracket start and a curly bracket end this area the scope of the that specific curly bracket start and curly bracket end here i can do n number of programming in for this scope okay you have to first understand the concept of a scope the curly bracket start and curly bracket end is a scope scope means the area where you are going to write the code means 
after the true is after the if satisfied what you want to do you have to go and write it here the same way after the false you want to do something you want to go to write it here okay the same way it's called the curly bracket start and curly bracket end we call as a scope you have to remember this word scope because in future you have to use the concept of scope all the places okay scope means start of curly bracket and end of curly bracket okay now what to discuss here age age is a variable right 18 is a value then what is this this type of things we call as a operator okay first what we, what we call this one we call as this one as a this greater than equal to is a operator okay what is operator the operator means what you want to operate is operator right means the operator will be placed always between two operand operand means this age is operand and 18 is operand means suppose you want to check if my age equal to 18 then you can use the concept of equal to equal to okay that means show you all these things in this example we discuss about greater than equal to the same way we have n number of operator example suppose you want to check like if my age equal to equal to 18 like age equal to equal to 18 here you have to comparing my age is actually equal to 18 okay the same way you want to check age is greater than 18 is all our operator greater than equal to means it will be 18 and more than 18 age greater than 18 means it will always be more than 18 same way age less than equal to 18 means it will be 18 or less than equal to 18 same way age is less than 18 we understand all these things equal to equal operator is used to check the both these value are equal or not the same way greater than means this is greater than to this value or not always remember when you are going to use any operator between two operand okay operand means this variable always remember it's always going to check the left hand side to the right hand side not right hand side to the left hand side right left hand side to the right hand side okay means whenever you're going to use any kind of operator in future always remember you are comparing between this left to right due to that i've written if age equal to equal to 18 what will happen the age greater than equal it will happen age less than equal to 18 what will happen age less than 18 what will going to happen the same way you can write different different type of operator operator or different different type of operators okay this this call as the conditional operator okay these are a conditional operator what is conditional operator let me show you let me say you what is conditional operator as I told, if a is greater than equal to 18, means I am checking that actually is a is greater than equal to 18. I am checking the condition, right? If you want to check a condition, the condition always return either true or false. Right? Simple one. If my age is greater than equal to 18, means you are checking that, okay, my age is greater than equal to really or not. Yes yes means true and no means false that's the reason always remember whatever you are going to pass inside the if is always be a true or false that true or false in programming are called as boolean always remember in programming if you want to declare same way it's a string it's a number the same way if any value will come as a true or false okay true or false we call as a boolean you have to remember all these things this is the basic concept of a programming you have to learn all these things okay means what i'm trying to say to here if always accept true or false okay? means whatever condition you are passing here is always be true or false if it's a true as I told it here, if it's a true, it's going to invoke this area. If it's a false, it's going to invoke this area. Same way, if my age greater than or equal to 18, it's going to invoke this area. Invoke means it's going to call this area. It's going to execute this area. Otherwise, it's going to execute this area. Okay. This is the use of if and else. And one thing you have to remember, always in the if, whatever you're going to return here, that should be written 
the concept of true or false or boolean always remember if something if true then going to going to execute this one if false it's going to execute this one okay now this is the basic of a true and false now all the cases just example we open next step ahead all the cases is not not true that you have to go only if and else if true and else sometimes you have to check the multiple condition what is a multiple condition just giving an example suppose there is a condition else there is another condition if my age is greater than suppose example greater than 50 i am not greater than 60 i am not eligible for something okay just example we are going to check that if my age is greater than 18 i am eligible for support license okay the same way else i am not eligible for support license okay but what i am trying to say it here if my age is greater than 60 or 70 or 80 i am only eligible for, eligible for five year license just example i am giving one example if your age is greater than 18 you are eligible for license okay driving license but if your age greater than suppose 60 you are eligible for suppose five year license otherwise you are not eligible now the concept will be in the same block in same code i want to check multiple condition okay means here i have only checked true or false if true it's a true if false it will false but now i want to check the multiple condition in one block one go okay example if I want to check multiple condition, then I have to use else if. Okay. What is the else if? Let me. If you got it. Else if means if not going to satisfy this one, then it's going to check this one. This one not satisfied, finally it's go to else. Okay? Means if age is greater than equal to suppose 65. Just example 65. Eligible for five peers. Let me run it. Refresh. It is displaying because my age is six, 16 here. Let me change to 18. It's showing e eligible for license, right? Let me change this condition to 18 to 70. Refresh. What is saying? Sorry. Okay. Now the error is coming. Why is error coming? We are checking age is greater than 18 but we did not check age is greater than 18 means it may be 18 it may be 100 it may be 200 right but we did not check age is greater than 18 and age less than equal to 60 less than 60 let's go and discuss all these things you can see <coughs> What happening here? First one, I have checked age is greater than 18. It's a yes. First condition, age is greater than 18. Okay, it's true. First one, age, age is greater than 18. It's returning true. But I'm testing another condition also. The age should be less than 60. Less than 60 means it's, it's not equal to 60. It's less than 60 and 59. Okay, then it will getting me false. Right? You will ask me what is this and and operator. Okay, I'm going to on that part later. Just to explain all these things. First, we check A is greater than 18. It's giving true. Next, we check A is less than 16. It's giving me false. Because why giving false? Because my age is 70. Due to that, this one getting false. Okay, this line, this condition getting false. Due to this line getting false, it's move to next part next checking okay what's next checking is checking okay else if means else or if and after this if there is else or again you are checking the condition if age is greater than or equal to 65 then i want to do all these things okay right the first condition check initially check for one condition only single condition true but we check two condition here age is greater than 18 as well as i have to check the condition of age less than 60 okay 
then if it's not satis this is not true then it's go to again else if it's checking that is greater than 16 yes then it's going to display otherwise going to else part now what we learn it here if the first block is getting false then it will go to the next block if the next block is getting false it will go to the next block same way you can add n number of else if else if in your code you can add thousand else if it's up to you how you're going to write the code you can go and write your else if okay or all you can add the else finally okay it's up to you how we are going to write a code okay means pass the if always you start from if if you have no else if then simply else always remember if should be else okay it's not it's optional but you have to know that if should be content else then if you want to do the multiple type of combination then you have to use else if okay let's go and discuss out what is this double line operator okay now we have to understand and means you say it's always check it's and double and means it's logical and okay dollar and means always check when you put the double and logical and it will check this should be a true and this should be a true means true and true and true true the output will be true okay true just example i think if people know that logical all true and false is false and always check what the uh, and operator going to check the left hand side and right hand side when it's always be true then it's going to be true be any one of these getting the false it's going to be false this is the use of logical and like you're checking if greater than 18 and is greater than 19 like, you're checking both the condition right if you're checking the both the condition in that case if you take the both the condition you have to use the logical and operator what will happen here this is called logical and what will happen it will going to check the left hand side as well as the right hand side okay this is called the if and else if you have to know the basic of each if and else if this is going to work for you this is called the programming of logical thinking you have to do the logical programming as you know we have uh, added this if and else if there is another way you can know the concept of uh, the, uh, this kind of if and else in if and else it's a little bit more dynamic means the value will come you write the code but just imagine we have list of value just imagine another concept we have a list of value inside this list of value you want to perform some kind of check example I have declared Suppose uh, day, declare day is suppose Monday, Monday, okay. I want to check if the mon if the day is equal to Monday, I want to say that hello Monday, okay. What you going to do? I'll go write if day equal to Monday, then I'll write the code console dot log hello. Same way, another one, if I could write if else equal to Tuesday, then I will write the code, sorry, I will write the code console, hello, Tuesday. Means, we are going to write all the days condition here, right? All the days condition here. Now, you know, you have seven days right you already know i have seven days there is no days beyond that in that case if you know the already the condition if you know already you have an option and you want to just doing the operation for that then you have to use the concept of switch case okay let me explain then you will ask what is the difference between e fails there is no difference but you know that these values monday tuesday thursday wednesday all these things will be all are the fixed means there is no going to change any option at a time in that case no need to go and write the same same condition here all the time what you'll do 
will write the condition called switch case. Okay. What is switch case? Switch will take a parameter. Suppose just example, I am giving the case, switch case. Okay. Now what will happen? It will check a case. Case Monday. I will explain all these things. Case Tuesday. Is next. I'm giving three days. Okay. Now what will happen whenever you pass a date in if condition? What will what compiler doing? The compiler doing if you give the a day, it will going to compare first. We're going to compile this one. Okay, false. And going to compile this one. False. It's going to compile another one. False. On train on, unless it's not going to satisfy each and every line. It's going to compile one by one. Whereas in case of switch, switch what will happen is not going to check each and every case. Suppose day is Monday, it directly jump to the Monday only. It's not going to check the Tuesday or Wednesday. Whenever, suppose it, suppose your day will be Tuesday, it's not going to execute the case one. Okay, it's not going to execute the case Monday. What I'm trying to say to here, in case of if else, Okay, in case of e fails, let me draw some, some something here. In case of e fails, what will happen? Your condition, your condition is going to check line by line, line by line, until and unless your all the this is false, it's going to this one. This is false, going to this one. This is false, this one means whenever the condition is not going to satisfy each and every line, it's going to execute one by one by one. Whereas in case of in case of um, switch case, what will happen? Once you return the switch, it's going sorry. Once you write a switch, it's not going to check the all the so you have all the condition. You have all the condition, but based on the value, it is always going to jump. Suppose it's a Tuesday, it's going to jump to the this one. It's not going to check this, 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 this. Whereas in case of if it's going to check each and every statement, statement means this one, this one, this is a statement, one statement, right? In case of if it's going to check each and every line, whereas in case of Swiss case, it's not going to check each and every case. It's only going to check whatever option you are providing in Swiss, it's just going to jump it here. here. But the things will be, Swiss case is always faster than a if else, but there is a special use for that. What is special use for that? In Swiss case, you cannot do any kind of a logical operation. What is logical operation? Means you can see it here. In if else, I can do programming. If age is greater than 65, or I can do a lot of things, right? All these things. But in Swiss case, you have to only pass the data here and you have to give the list of option means in between this data whatever value we are passing here just giving these are my option if the value is going to match this case then it's going to execute otherwise in if there is else condition the same was in switch there is a default condition if nothing is going to satisfy if nothing is going to match means you are passing the date and you mark the data as suppose xyz now when the day day is going to here it's going to check my date is monday no i have no day as compared to xyz what will happen it's going to the default block okay this is called the same in efls we have a else block the same as in switch case we have a default block but you have to understand the difference between switch efls and else always remember in switch case only used when you have a list of option Already more, you have a list of option. Whereas in e fails, you have to do some logical operation. Whereas you cannot do logical operation in Swiss case. You have to simple pass a value and check that value is exist inside this option or not. That is the use of e fails and Swiss case. Got it? Always remember this thing. This is the basic of a programming because anyhow you are going to write the programming e fails all this time, right? You have to understand this concept of if else and switch case now now the concept how i can do that okay 
what is this concept of break all these things let me explain when you are using switch case switch will start from switch you have to pass the option the option may be string and number always remember the switch case you can pass either string or number you cannot pass any other things okay always remember this is the uh, basics to create a switch case switch case switch then you have to pass a variable name and you have a different different case like how to write a case case monday a m o n then case mon then colon uh, this scope started and you have because you have multiple break multiple cases right to differentiate between one case to another case you have to consider a break break means once it's got executed it's not going to further execute all these things break means going to stop the compiler not going to compile other cases okay that is the use of break it's going to stop the compiler not going to compile other other uh, block okay that is the use of break it's going to put the break on after this scope that is the use of use switch and case okay got it so what we learn today we learn how to declare a variable what is a data type and how to log a data and again we learn different different type of condition if and else and switch case we have to learn then we have to learn what is a different different type of operator okay and what is this and operator in future going to learn about different different type of operator but as of now just read these are the different different operator we have to use okay now now go and do uh, we have to explore different different operator like you, suppose you want to add two number you want to subtract like you want to uh, subtract two number you want to multiply two number how you can do that all these things okay the same way to add two number or uh, like you have to uh, all this number suppose just example bar norm 1 equal to 18 suppose um, 10 bar norm 2 equal to 20 i have declared two variable norm 1 and norm 2 okay and as the value is 10 and 20 i want to sum it the bar sum equal to norm 1 plus norm 2 you all know that plus minus symbol the same way if you want to do any kind of mathematical operation arithmetic operation you have to use the arithmetic operator what is arithmetic operator let me show okay is defining 30 the arithmetic operator is plus minus uh, divisible and multiplication and module find the percentage right this is called the arithmetic operator okay arithmetic operator. I am taking a little bit more time to understand all this because this is the basic of if you are going to write all the programming, you have to know this what is switch case, if else, all this thing you have to know. Then we will go in depth into because if you don't know how to declare a variable, if you don't know how to do all these things, then how are you going to write the program, right? This is the basic step to write any of the programming. You have to know JavaScript, then we'll go for the TypeScript. Okay, this this called the arithmetic operator. Suppose you want to add. Of add, multiply, subtract any of the operator, any of the value in the JavaScript, you have to use the arithmetic operator. This plus, minus, divisible, multiplication, all these things you have to use. Okay, this is the basic of arithmetic operator. Then, what we cover today, we have covered all these things like if else switch case, all these things, and uh, the basic declare a variable, use of variable, lot of thing we have to discuss. in tomorrow class we'll go and discuss about how to create the looping or this loop i'll going to discuss about the loop then we'll go for function and we're going to write a simple simple function code and we'll going to learn how you can interact with the html means in the html button click you want to do something you want to create a small calculator type of application how you can do that we'll learn after that we'll start the typescript okay